So what is diabetic ketoacidosis? Well, diabetic ketoacidosis is uh, an acute disorder. It could be life-threatening complication of diabetes. And this condition is characterized by hyperglycemia and ketoacidosis, as well as ketonuria. And so ketoacidosis means to say that there's presence of ketones and there is going to be an evidence of ketones excreted in the urine. It actually occurs when there is absolute or relative insulin deficiency, which inhibits the ability of glucose to enter the cells to be utilized as metabolic fuel. And therefore, because of that, the liver will rapidly break down the fat into ketones to employ as a fuel source. And this production of ketones will now accumulate in the blood and the urine and turn, therefore, the blood into an acid state or become acidotic. So this occurs mainly in patients with type 1, but actually not uncommon in patients also with type 2. So what is the problem in diabetes? Well, we all know that in diabetes, there is a problem with glucose metabolism as a result of an insufficiency or lack of or absence of insulin. When we have a cell, the cell relies on a metabolic fuel, and that metabolic fuel is glucose. So when we eat, the carbohydrates that we eat transform into glucose. So the glucose is now rapidly absorbed into the bloodstream. And the glucose now is going to be available for the cells to be utilized as a fuel. The thing, though, is that glucose relies on a passive transporter. And this passive transporter is insulin. Thus, without insulin or insufficient insulin, what's going to happen is glucose will not be able to enter in the cell. So insulin is the passive transporter of glucose into the cell and therefore providing the metabolic fuel. The offshoot of this metabolic activity is carbon dioxide and water. So I'm now going to draw a cell on the other end over here. And so the glucose wants to enter the cell, but it could not because there is no insulin to passive transport it. And so what happens then? The cell is going to look for other sources of energy. And looking for other sources of energy is what's called gluconeogenesis. Neo meaning new, genesis origin. And now the body turns to amino acids to maintain metabolic activity. And what happens, however, when we utilize these sources of energy is that there's going to be a production of ketones. And ketones, unfortunately, are eliminated primarily through the GI tract. It could also be eliminated through the respiratory system. And that's why a lot of times when you have DKA, you have what is known as an acetone breath or a ketone breath, because ketones could be eliminated through the lungs as well as the GI tract. However, its elimination is going to be very, very slow and not as efficient. And therefore, there's going to be an accumulation of this. When there's going to be an accumulation of ketones, it's going to result in ketoacidosis. And as a result of that, what's going to happen when you have ketoacidosis, you're going to have ketones in your urine. And that is what is known as ketonuria. So remember that the fluid source is no longer glucose, but rather there's going to be a breakdown of fat, which causes an increase in fatty acids, which are utilized now for fuel. The pathophysiology results from a relative lack of insulin. And because there's going to be lack of insulin, the body looks for other sources of energy. And there's going to be an increase in your regulatory hormones, like release of glucagon, cortisol, growth hormone, and epinephrine, and results therefore into hepatic metabolism of free fatty acids, which results in the production of ketones and therefore induces the state known as ketoacidosis.
This is a metabolic acidosis, and because of the metabolic acidosis, the lungs now will compensate, and this will result in the typical breathing pattern of a patient with diabetic ketoacidosis. What happens to serum potassium and why? This is the cell, and this is going to be your acids. So you now have an increase in acids. Acids are defined by the presence of hydrogen hydrogen ions. Now, hydrogen ions are going to go into the cell. If the hydrogen ions are going to go into the cell, what is going to happen to potassium? Potassium will now go into the vascular space. Initially, you will have an increase in potassium in the vascular space. But you remember now that in diabetes, there's going to be an increase in urinary output as well. So therefore, what eventually happens to the potassium. So initially, we have an increase in potassium, but as diuresis occurs, when diuresis sets in, what's going to happen to your potassium? Decreases. The mechanism is that acidosis causes potassium to move from the cells to the extracellular fluid or the plasma in exchange for hydrogen ions. In acidosis, the hydrogen moves into the cell and as an exchange, the potassium leaves the cell and goes into the extracellular space. So when you have diabetic ketoacidosis, the glucose is unable to go into the cell and therefore is going to lead into hyperglycemia. If you have hyperglycemia, what happens to the number of particles that's going to be in your plasma? It makes it concentrated. You're going to have an increase in plasma osmolality. So if this were your plasma, a lot of glucose, and now here is your cell right here, and maybe there's one particle of glucose. So what's going to happen to the movement of water? Water will now be attracted to the higher concentration of glucose in the vascular bed, and therefore it's going to lead to this intracellular dehydration. As a result of the increase in your plasma water, what's going to happen is that you're going to have diuresis. And as a result of diuresis, you're going to have a decrease in extracellular fluid volume. It also leads to electrolyte abnormalities, in particular, an abnormality in the potassium, but it could also affect your sodium, your phosphate, as well as your magnesium. All these are going to to contribute now to the development of a decrease in glomerular filtration rate, which enhances or even makes the acidosis even worse. And therefore, you're going to have all these mechanisms going and around and around. This is what happens in diabetic ketoacidosis.